Welcome to Projects in iOS from Edgeonics. My name is Brett, and in this lesson, we're going to look at the application we're going to build throughout this next module. So this is our next app. This is going to be a weather app, and I'm going to go over now what this app is all about, then we'll see a working demo. So these are the mock-ups I've created in Sketch, and what I have here are three different home screen mock-ups, or maybe the main screen here. And what's happening is it's going to supply a main icon, and there's three of them, which are represented here. So you have cloudy, sunny, and rain, so a rainy day. And then I've also, to emphasize, so kind of bringing in some of these design principles, the what whatever the description of the day is, I've emphasized it with some gradient. So you really get the full impact of what's going on, not just with this icon here or this image here of the clouds, but then you get this gray background. And rather than just a static, solid gray background, I've gone with the gradient to give it a little bit more depth. And there's a gradient applied to each of these backgrounds here that matches their main icon. So we have our icon below it we have the current temperature and then also display of the city. Then down here we have a three day forecast and it, we're showing the high and the low along with another representative image of whatever's going on with that day. And as you can see, the screen is fairly clean. There's not a lot on here and it's just meant to give you the information at a, a quick glance. So you have the main information here of the current day. And then this information down here is smaller and not as prominent. This app is going to be a tab bar app. So at the bottom, I've got two icons, a home, and then these two arrows that are kind of pointing in opposite directions for a switch. So when you click the switch, you basically go to an ad screen. This is where you add another city, or in our case, you actually are going to switch it because we're not saving cities. So it's not like the weather app on the iPhone where you can just keep adding all these cities and it keeps track of their weather. So here we're just going to switch. So we can start with San Diego. We may switch it and go to New York City, and then that's going to display. And it's going to display one of these screens depending on what the current weather is. So this is always displaying the current weather. And then we get a three-day forecast. That's what this is. Let's look at a demo and see this in action to get a better understanding of what's happening. And if I go to the simulator, this is the screen where we can add in our city. So I'll start with Atlanta. So we're adding by zip code which instead of typing in the city name, it removes any kind of misspellings or parsings we have to do and makes it really easy. So here I'm going to add. So this right here is a confirmation. It gives me the city name back. If it couldn't find it, then it would just say something like city not found. If I click on home, notice also over here in the images, in the mockups, we have gray buttons, but down here, this one is blue. So iOS is highlighting the button for us. That gives us our action state. So when I go to home, that's going to highlight in blue as well. So there we are. So here's Atlanta. You can see we've got the cloudy uh, image, and then we have the cloudy background. And then we've got our three-day forecast. And if I switch again, I can go to, say, for example, Seattle. 98104, add, and there we have Seattle. If I go home, so Seattle, 60 degrees, sunny, and there's our three-day forecast. So that is how the app works, basically. Now, what we're going to do is, like we've done with some of the previous apps, is take these mock-ups, these images, and translate that into a fully functional application. So we're going to bring all this into Xcode and use some of these assets and then apply the functionality around it. So what we're doing is as we bring these assets into Xcode, there's kind of points where we say, okay, we're going to use this image that we've created in Sketch. And then there's other times where we're, we're not going to use images. We're going to be able to do things inside of Xcode. 
So for example, the gradient. We're going to build these gradients in Xcode. We're not going to use images for that. So we don't have to worry about using any kind of image views or anything like that. So that is a look at the app and also a demonstration of it as well. And as we go through this, we're using an API to get the weather from openweather.org. So we're going to look at that, how to use it. It's coming through as JSON, and we're going to see that coming through, how to parse it. So we're going to take the raw JSON and then put it into uh, what we're going to use a website that's going to display it in a more readable format for us. So as we're going through, we're building up our parser. We can, we'll use a website to help us better read what we're doing um, with the code that's coming through from the API. And we're also going to use a framework called Swifty JSON. So we'll see how to get that, how to put it into Xcode and make use of it. What that does is allows us to more easily parse JSON. So the JSON coming from the Open Weather API. All right, so that is an introduction into the application we're going to be building here. There's a lot going on. This app is not going to use core data because we don't actually need it since we're not storing multiple cities or anything like that. Now, on that note, you can extend into that. But if you're going to go that route, you have to keep in mind you'll need a way to maybe every five minutes go through all your cities and get the most recent weather. Or maybe just as the user selects your city, then you would go and get the most recent weather so that way it looks like it's always in the background updating. And you'll see the, the fetching through this API is fairly quick. And there's not a lot of delay that goes on with getting it. So getting it, if you're using multiple cities, getting it as the user selects the city, it's kind of seamless to the user. Also, it would save on resources versus having something in the background constantly polling multiple cities to keep them up to date. But that's not what we're doing here. However, I just wanted to kind of elaborate on that a little bit if you want to go in that direction. So now we're going to get into actually building up this application.